welcome to Second Life University, a project that aims to provide informative content about the virtual world of Second Life. My name is Strawberry Linden, and today we will be learning some basic tips about land and groups from Second Life's land product specialist, Izzy Linden. Thanks for joining us, Izzy. Thank you, Strawberry. How are you doing? I'm doing great, and yourself? I'm excited to learn a lot, and, and I know you have a lot to teach me, so let's get into it. But before we actually get into it, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? What do you do at Linden Lab, and how long have you been here? Absolutely. So my name is Izzy Linden. I started with the lab on the concierge team back in February of 2007. So I just recently celebrated 15 years with Linden Lab, and I've enjoyed wow. every day. Currently, well, I started on the concierge team, like I mentioned, and I'm currently on the land operations team. And there we handle a whole bunch of different projects from Linden Homes, abandoned land requests, the auction systems, and a whole lot else. Pretty much anything that you can view as a product uh, in Second Life, we probably have our hands in it somehow. And we deal directly with the Linden Department of Public Works. Amazing. A lot you do a lot here and I remember uh, when I had you on lab gab before you had a lot to teach us and and share with us so we are gonna try and keep a uh, eye on the YouTube channel to see what questions are coming in if you do have questions for Izzy but I think Izzy you have some stuff to teach us so let's get started absolutely so we're just gonna basically do a light overview of general land and group tips uh obviously not can't go too too in depth in a short video mm -hmm. um but definitely anybody like strawberry said if you have any questions that are within the scope of what we're talking about go ahead and send them via the youtube channel so the first thing i wanted to talk about is the difference between uh, setting something to a parcel to group and deeding a parcel to group because there seems to be a lot of concern in that. Uh, if it's just set to group, and we'll show you what that looks like in just a minute, it means that certain controls like the options tab in about land take effect. Uh, the access list, if you use groups, uh, can take effect. Whereas anything that actually is set in the group roles and abilities, that specifically only affects a parcel that's deeded to group. So if you have an issue where you want to allow other people to modify your video, your media stream or something like that, and you're finding your group members aren't able to do so, it might be that the parcel that they're trying to do it in is only set to group rather than deeded. So Strawberry, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to click on world and then about land. World and then about land. Um, I, I do. Uh, there is a comment on the YouTube channel saying that there is an echo that makes it very hard to understand. Um, I'm not sure if that is happening for everybody. Um, I don't hear an echo. Uh, Izzy, do you hear an echo at all? I'm not hearing an echo at all. Okay, so I'm going to keep watching the YouTube channel. Let me know if others are having the same issue and uh, I can try to see what's going on. But I've opened up the about land. Okay, great. So right now it shows you as the owner, Strawberry Linden. Right. And if you click that button where it says set, mm -hmm. choose the group that you want. Okay, we'll go with the PR Island group. Press OK. Great. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Now it shows that the group is the PR uh, management group. Mm -hmm. And that means that that's the parcel that is set to group. Okay. If instead you wanted to deed this over to group, you check mark allow deed to group just so, below where it says the management. Oh, right here. Okay. And then click deed just to the right of that. Okay. And hit okay. Okay. Now you'll see that instead of it showing the owner as Strawberry Linden, it shows the owner as group owned. Okay. So that's how you know a parcel is deeded to group. Real quickly, just to show what we were talking about when I was talking about the differences, click on the options tab. Options, okay. So you see where it says fly, build, object entry, and run scripts, and you have everyone checkmarked? Right. If you didn't have them checkmarked, but the group on the right-hand side was still checkmarked, that is how it knows which group you're talking about is if it's set or deeded to a group. Okay. Another common misconception though, uh, is if it has group check marked, 
that means that those abilities are for everybody in the group. So if you have a role in your group that says these people can run scripts, but you have check marked group here, it automate overrides that and says everybody can. So the way to let your group roles take permission or take uh, pr uh, precedence is to have neither one checked. Okay, so I would like say, I don't want people, everybody to res here, uh, build here. So I can right. uncheck everyone. Uh huh. And that means that only people in the group. Okay. And then if you uncheck group, that okay. means only people in the group that specifically have a role with the ability to be able to do that, that would be able to do it. Okay. Understood. So let's say I had an, uh, a region and it was open to the public and uh, I didn't want people to come and res objects there unless they joined my group. So if I deeded my land to the group and I just checked the group, anybody who joined the group can go ahead and res objects. That's how that works. Absolutely. Okay. But one thing I just want to clarify with that is if you're doing that for security purposes, like some people might just do that because they've got a sandbox. They don't care who does, but they want to see on the group who's going ahead and joined and been on their land. That's mm -hmm. fine. Mm -hmm. But if you're doing it for security purposes, you wouldn't want to leave the group as open enrollment because that means if I want to go to your region and cause problems, it doesn't really hurt me to go ahead and join that group since it's open enrollment. Okay. So I would just make sure that you look at the purpose for why you're doing it. And if it is security, don't have your group be open enrollment. Okay. Understood. Perfect. All right. The next thing I want to do is if you go to the objects tab, mm -hmm. the, a lot of people have a misconception of the differences between the region capacity and the parcel land capacity and the parcel land impact. Now, in this particular situation, this parcel is the only parcel in this entire region that's under the ownership of your group. So the, it's a little easier to tell the difference. If you look and see where it says 19 available on region capacity, mm -hmm. that also shows you that the parcel land capacity is also 19. Okay. So the difference is region capacity is how many parcels in this region that are under the same ownership as this parcel, the total amount of prims that are available. Okay. Um, then parcel land capacity is specifically this parcel here. So when people are sometimes looking at abandoned land uh, and they're like, oh, this parcel has 4,000 prims, that's wonderful, I want that. Mm -hmm. But they're looking at the region capacity. If there were other abandoned parcels, it's adding it all together up in that region capacity. Okay. So make sure you're looking at the parcel land capacity. So the 19 available is only for the parcel that we, you and I are standing in right now. Correct. And the reason why it's the same in region capacity and parcel capacity is because this is the only parcel in this region owned by that group. Right. Okay. And if and we were to switch it back to your name, then it would have the full amount because the other greater parcel for this region is also in your name. Okay. And let's say if we wanted to, uh, the prims are ca calculated by the, how big the parcel is. So if we wanted more prims, we would just make the parcel bigger. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, basically, if you take what size the parcel is compared to the full region, which a full region is 256 meters by 256 meters, which is 65,536, mm -hmm. um, which is math we don't really need to do. But this parcel here is um, a certain percentage of that. It gets that percentage of the prim. So it's always an equal share. And I know some people in the YouTube channel are going to be like, yes, but I can modify that if I use object bonus and stuff like that. That's a little beyond the basic tips and uh, tricks and whatnot that we're going to talk about. But yes, you are right. You can fudge those numbers with things like object bonus and stuff like that, too. Interesting. Good to know. Okay. Well, how do how do you how did you create this parcel? Okay, let me do one more thing before we jump into the parcel creation. Okay. I just want to show uh, how to tell if a parcel is abandoned. Okay. If you go ahead and click on the general tab again, mm -hmm. you see how right now it has the name Strawberry Linden, and then it has the description Private Land for Strawberry Linden. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. If the land was abandoned, it would have the name that shows the date that it was abandoned and say abandoned land. Mm -hmm. And then in the description, it would say land abandoned by and the name of the person that abandoned it. And it would say for additional information about abandoned land, visit this knowledge base article. And it gives a link over to that knowledge base article about abandoned land. However, I've seen a bunch of situations where people have submitted tickets wanting abandoned land because they see those things I just mentioned. But in actuality, somebody within the past few days, sometimes within the past few months, mm -hmm. has already purchased it, but they never changed the name and description. They just left that there. So also just do yourself a service and check to make sure the owner is still showing as governor linden uh, okay. just because i don't want you to go through all the trouble of submitting a ticket waiting for us to respond to it and then have us tell you actually that land is already in somebody else's ownership okay good to know but to your question about how to make a parcel mm -hmm. the first thing you want we made this parcel here mm -hmm. What I want to do is go ahead and you've got about that land open, right click on the ground and open edit terrain. Okay. Now you've got, you see how you've got select land with the dot next to it? Yes. That means that we can go ahead and draw things. If you had one of the other tools selected, you could go ahead and just click and select land to go ahead and change that. Okay. Go ahead and make a parcel just to the side of this parcel by just drawing a little box. Just attach it to this parcel? Yeah, just on, on any side, but outside of the box. Outside of the box. Okay. So right here? That's great. Good. Yep. Okay. Perfect. Now you're going to go ahead and click on subdivide. Subdivide right here. Okay. Yep. And then hit OK. Mm hmm now we've created another box and you'll notice that it has a green border because you own it. Okay. Uh, if you have, if it's a red border, then that would mean that somebody else owns it. If it's a blue border, it's a group. And if it's a purple border, then that means that it's currently prepped for auction. Okay. Now we're going to show a little bit of a error here uh, when we go try to join, mm -hmm. go ahead and another box but i want it to just basically have one square in this parcel we're standing in mm -hmm. and one square in the next parcel over that you just made okay so oh is that too big <laughs> too big because it'll try to join the main one too okay there you go Perfect. is that good yep okay. let go and then i want you to, we'll see the edit uh terrain mm -hmm. hit join join okay and you say it'll now if you look in the upper right it says you selected a parcel with different owners right so that's why it didn't join the right. reason is even though you ultimately own both of these parcels the one we're standing in is owned by your group right. and the one that's next to it is owned by you specifically right so in about land mm -hmm. go ahead and right or uh right click on the ground underneath us and go to about land okay now I want you to click reclaim land, reclaim which is the land. button. Yep. Mm -hmm. That'll move it back into your ownership. Okay. Now draw that same little box between the two parcels. Okay. And now go ahead and hit join land and hit okay. Now okay. we've combined those two parcels. Excellent. That was pretty easy. Yeah, oh, it is. Uh, the mm -hmm. thing is, is where it gets more complicated is when you've got a bunch of uh, parcels next to each other and you're wanting to just combine these two specific parcels and not um, another one. Or you find something like this, which I'm just going to show real quickly. Mm -hmm. Subdivide. What I did was I just subdivided a little parcel in the center of us. Okay. And then I'm going to join it to the main parcel and now we've got if you oh, just two go ahead and just click on one of those two small parcels and go to about land mm -hmm. but you see that it's actually showing both as the same oh, parcel even okay. though they're separated so sometimes people will go and look at it a parcel that they're interested in but the size is off from what it looks like i mean the one that you're next to is obviously like a 32 meter parcel yeah if that other parcel that's 48 meters was way far away, you might not notice that it was the same part of that parcel. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. So look at the size and see if that makes sense uh, for what you want. And if you're like su perhaps suggesting that you want to buy abandoned land, if the parcel is bigger than what you're looking at, say, here's the location that I want it at, uh, but I only want, you know, 1024 at that location, not the rest of it that's separated from it. And that's just the way you would describe it. Okay. Um, one other quick little thing I wanted to mention was how to properly grab a slurl. Mm -hmm. if, if you just click in that white bar at the very top of the screen. Right here? Mm -hmm. Yep. That right there is your Second Life URL. So any ticket that asks you for a Second Life URL, that's what you're looking for. Okay. Great. Um, I see some questions coming into the YouTube chat, but um, did you want to leave those for the end? Did you want to continue first or should I ask as we're going along? Um, I've got one other quick little thing to throw in here, uh, which is basically group donations. A lot of people that are dealing with land, they will end up being really close to their limit or they already have their donations in a group. Mm -hmm. And so they ask us to go ahead and sell a parcel to their group rather than to them. Linden, or Second Life doesn't have a way to actually set a parcel specifically for sale to a group. So what we do is we set it to the person and then invite them to use the buy for group button. On that about land general tab that you're on, mm -hmm. if you just move your mouse in the bottom right corner of that window, buy that is group. the buy for group button. It will highlight if the parcel is set for sale to you and there's enough uh, donation in the group to go ahead and fit this parcel. Okay. So just to kind of give you an idea of how to use the buy for group, um, I have noticed that Firestorm has some other ways that you can buy land uh, more easily. Uh, but uh, different people have said, you know, I don't have the buy for group option in my viewer, you can still go to world and then about land. And that button is even in the Firestorm viewer, the buy for group button does show up there. Okay. Great. Uh, anybody who has questions outside of this video, though, we do have a monthly concierge and user group or land user group meeting. Uh, it's basically the fourth Wednesday of each month at noon Pacific time, except for, of course, holidays. And I know that um, Strawberry said she's going to put that and the other links about yes. the things that we've talked about uh, in the description. So definitely keep that in mind. For Let's sure. bring on the questions. Um, before actually we get into the questions, um, I had a question myself. How do I get rid of both of these parcels now? What's the easiest and fastest way? Well, if you have, one thing to remember is right now, uh, let me give you a little Professor Izzy test, okay. Strawberry. <laughs> How many parcels do you currently have? Well, just these two here, right? Except you're correct and incorrect. Uh-oh. <laughs> I've already failed the test. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, te technically, if you just said two, you're technically correct. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not the two little parcels because technically they're only one parcel. They're just not connected. Right. But the other parcel is the rest of the region. Oh, right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the way to get rid of them and make them all one parcel mm -hmm. is go ahead and drag something from just that first box uh, to the center area, but not the second box. Okay. And you could actually drag like all here. three. I'm just trying to show. Yep. Like that. So that should combine that little parcel with the big parcel. Mm -hmm. Now, in actuality, it's going to do all of it because, as we've said, those two little parcels are actually the same. Right. Hit join, and it'll have joined everything together. And then all those parcels are gone. Okay. Exactly. We're now one big happy parcel. <laughs> Excellent. So another question I know, uh, which I, I get this um, confusion with people that submit their destinations to the destination guide, mm -hmm. you need to obviously have a region that's open to public when you submit destinations to the destination guide. And I think what they do is they go into the about land and under access, they check anyone can visit and then they think anybody can visit. However, the region settings override the about land settings, right? Absolutely. The way I try to uh, teach people now on the mainland, obviously, you don't have the region estate settings. Right. Um, but on a private island, instead of having the single door, which is about land, mm -hmm. it's more like an airlock. You've got the region estate controls and you've got the about land and they both have their own access lists. So you want to make sure that those settings are the same or 
have one be anyone and mm -hmm. the other have all the controls that you're going to use. Uh, now, obviously, for the destination guide, it requires that it be uh, available to anyone because we don't advertise something and right. then say, but a few people can come. Yeah. Uh, but for other people that are trying to restrict, I would always suggest that they go ahead and leave one of them, whether it be about land or region of state, as allow anybody mm -hmm. and then make all the controls on the other side. So to get to the region settings, they go to world and then region of state. And I think under access or actually just under the estate, um, they have to make sure it's for the destination guide or when they want it open to public, they have to make sure anyone can visit is checked, right? Exactly. As well as Perfect. that. But uh, but you said that if they also um, make parcel owners can be more restrictive, then you have more control, the parcel owners have more control using the about land options. Is that correct? Correct. On a private island, mm -hmm. if the region owner wants to allow its parcel owners to be able to make uh, controls that are different than the region estate level, that option has to be checkmarked. Okay. Okay. So a question that came in to the YouTube chat, how do we get started with buying mainland using our premium and account land allotment? Is that something easy that we can show or direct them to? Absolutely. Okay. First of all, in the description, uh, there's going to be a knowledge base article uh, that talks about abandoned land. Um, I believe that one is... Which one is it? If you link to it, uh, click on it. How can I can share it in the YouTube chat. Let me get it for you real quick. Okay. I got it right here. And the knowledge base article will take them step by step through doing that? Exactly. Perfect. I just put it at the bottom. Okay. So we'll put that in there for you guys. Yeah. Uh, but the other thing is if you click on search. Mm -hmm. So if I go to world and then search. Mm -hmm. um, or the magnifying glass at the bottom of your screen. Right. Mm -hmm. On the left hand side, click on land to buy or rent. Okay. Now, in this instance, I'm going to assume that we're just talking about mainland. Mm -hmm. um, just I mean, obviously, you can change these settings based on what you want. What I would suggest is click on mainland, click on buy, and leave the maturity open. However, obviously, if you specifically wanted just general, you could modify that. Mm -hmm. um, before you put in any keywords, hit the search button. Okay. And the reason for that is now on the left side, you have filters. You can go ahead and put your minimum square meters and maximum square meters. So if you're looking for just a 1024, you could change both of those to 1024. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you were looking specifically, let's say you wanted anything from 1024 to 4096. Oh, to 4096. Making you change what you're doing now. No, it's okay. <laughs> but mm -hmm. let's say you didn't want to spend more than 10,000 lindens on it. So change your maximum to 10,000 lindens. Okay. Okay. There's a list of all the parcels that are between the sizes of 1024 and 4096 mm -hmm. uh, for a price maximum of 10,000 lindens. Excellent. Okay. And obviously, there's a lot of different ways that you can play with that. Now, when you're dealing with mainland, that's pretty much going to be what you see is what you get. Mm -hmm. With private islands, you want to actually make sure that you read the description. Uh, because when you're buying land on a private island that's set for sale to you, you're not actually the ultimate owner. You're effectively a renter because the region owner ultimately owns that. So just keep that in mind. Read the covenant on it. Uh, make sure because it might say... Like you might find a 4096 that's available for sale for one Linden dollar because it's kind of like an advertisement that's being put out there. But the covenant will say that the weekly uh, rent for this parcel is X, Y, Z. That's what they're talking about. Okay, great. Um, I don't see any other questions coming in. And oh, no. uh, I know, I think we, we did we did well. But I would love to have you on again to possibly ask more land questions. Uh, hopefully, anytime, that would be great. Um, I think uh, let's, let's cut the video now. I really appreciate everybody for watching and, um, you know, participating. And hopefully, uh, we'll be back with another Second Life University very soon to teach you guys something else. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add closed captioning and the links and captions to 
this video in a couple of hours once it gets processed and hopefully it'll be there for you to um, click and and and, uh, <laughs> and view. Thank you so much. Loving the comments on the YouTube channel. See you all soon. Stay safe and stay virtual. Thanks, Izzy. Thank you for having me.